anemia in pregnancy. Uh, this represents the uh, hematological changes in pregnancy. Uh, we see that the uh, plasma volume, the blood volume, and the red cell mass is increased throughout pregnancy in a different uh, ratio. Uh, this leads to um, plasma volume being increased more than the uh, red cell mass, leading to uh, physiological anemia. Uh, and a reduction in uh, hematocrit concentration. Um, this is another uh, way to uh, know the physiological changes in pregnancy. Um, what is anemia? It is defined as a reduction in circulating hemoglobin mass below the critical value. Uh, normally, it is between 12 and 14. The WHO accepted um, 11 as uh, the normal cutoff value in pregnancy. Uh, therefore, any hemoglobin level below 11 in pregnancy should be considered as anemia. Um, iron requirements in pregnancy. Total iron requirement is 1 gram. Um, 300 milligrams for the fetus and placenta, 500 for the increase in the red cell mass, and uh, 200 milligram is lost. Um, average requirement is 4 to 6 milligram per day, um, 2.5 in first trimester and early second trimester, 5.5 from 20 weeks to 32 weeks, and 6 to 8 milligram per day from 32 weeks onward. How will you classify anemia? You know, mild, moderate, severe, and very severe. The risks associated with um, anemia, uh, we can um, do them or categorize them as antenatal, intrapartum, and postnatal, um, antenatal poor weight gain and preterm labor, intrapartum dysfunctional labor, hemorrhage shock, cardiac failure, and postnatal period PPS, perperial sepsis, subinvoluted uterus, and increased risk of venous thromboembolism. Um, what are the fetal and neonatal risks? Risk associated with prematurity, low birth weight, poor Afghan scars, cores, um, uh, fetal distress, and neonatal anemia. Causes of anemia commonly is the physiological one. As we described it before, it's due to the increase in plasma volume more than the increase in red cell mass. <coughs> this leads to um, uh, physiological anemia. Nutritional, related to iron deficiency, folate and vitamin B12, hemorrhagic, acute or chronic blood loss, hemoglobin apathies, um, hemolytic, congenital or acquired, and aplastic anemia. Clinical presentation of anemia, symptoms and signs, we all know them, fatigue, loss of appetite, digestive upset, dyspnea, palpitations, pallor, pale nails, colonychia, pale tongue, and in very severe cases, it can lead to generalized edema. What are the investigations that we should done uh, if we detect anemia? CBC, peripheral smear, um, MCV, MCH, and MCHC, uh, total iron binding capacity, serum iron and serum ferritin, um, uh, free erythrocyte protoporphyrin, bone marrow examination, urine examination, stool examination, and serum protein level. Special tests that we can do, serum folate and um, folate level in the RBC, serum vitamin B12, serum bilirubin, Coombs test, uh, hemoglobin electrophoresis, and red cell osmotic fragility. What are the prophylactic measures? Routine screening for anemia for adolescent girls 
from school days, encouraging iron-rich foods, fortification of widely consumed food with iron, and providing iron supplementation from school days, um, annual screening for those with risk factors. This, this is done outside pregnancy. We, we mentioned these prophylactic measures to all population. Prevention of iron deficiency, prophylaxis of non-pregnant women by 60 mg of elemental iron daily for 3 months, um, iron um, uh, supplementation during pregnancy. Uh, of course, this shouldn't uh, be done routinely. We should screen for anemia in the first pregnancy in the booking visit, and if we uh, find that the ferritin level or the hemoglobin level is low, we should uh, supplement the woman with uh, iron. So as uh, written down, the WHO uh, recommendation that uh, universal oral, oral iron supplementation for pregnant women for six months in pregnancy and additional three months postpartum where the prevalence is more than 40%. And if the prevalence of anemia in that population is more than 40%, uh, we should supplement women with um, uh, iron and folic acid uh, for all women. But if uh, not, uh, routine uh, prophylaxis is not recommended. What are the effects of anemia on pregnancy? As we said before, cardiac failure at 30 to 34 weeks of pregnancy. Increased susceptibility to infection, preterm labor, preeclampsia, uterine inertia, postpartum hemorrhage, cardiac failure, and shock. In the parperium, it can lead also to cardiac fa failure, um, increased risk of perforal sepsis, and uh, risk of postpartum hemorrhage and subinvoluted uterus, and failing of lactation. Um, on the fetus, prematurity and its risks. Intrauterine growth restriction, increased perinatal death, and decreased iron stores in neonate. How will you manage anemia by oral iron therapy? It is safe, inexpensive, and effective. Um, National Nutritional Anemia Prophylaxis Program suggests that we should uh, give 60 mg of elemental iron and 400 micrograms of folic acid daily. Uh, these, these are the um, amount of elemental iron in each type of uh, ferrous uh, salts. Uh, the best one is the ferrous fumarate, which contains about 66 mg of elemental iron. Ferrous sulfate contains also 60. Um, and these should be our first choice for oral um, uh, supplementation of iron. Side effects of oral iron, upper GI tract, uh, symptoms like nausea and gastric discomfort, loss of appetite, staining of teeth, and some lower uh, symptoms like constipation, diarrhea, and flatulence. These side effects uh, are the leading cause of um, uh, making uh, obstetrician uh, give uh, um, IV iron uh, for the woman. Parenteral iron therapy, it has the same efficacy, but it is um, less side effects and no need for compliance because uh, it is given once every one or two weeks. We have different preparations for uh, IV iron. Blood transfusion indicated in severe uh, anemia at any gestational age, if there is ongoing loss, if we are near term that the um, uh, HB level uh, should be increased in a very short period of time, failure of response to iron therapy, hemoglobinopathies as indicated. <coughs> Adverse reactions associated with blood transfusion, uh, transfusion reaction, infection, volume overload, others like hypothermia, citrate toxicity, hyperkalemia, 
hypocalcemia, and rarely air embolism. Management during labor, active management of third stage of labor should be done routinely nowadays. Um, during parperium, we have to uh, have a good rest. Uh, iron and folate therapy for three months after delivery. Infection, if any, should be treated energetically. Careful watch for purpural sepsis, failing of lactation and uterine atony, and the risk of thromboembolism. Now we will talk about specific type of anemia in pregnancy, which is thalassemia. Uh, it is a blood disorder passed down through families, means it, it is inherited, in which the body makes an abnormal form of hemoglobin. We have two types, the alpha thalassemia and the beta thalassemia. We have uh, the two types of anemia, of uh, thalassemia, alpha and beta thalassemia, we all know these. Signs and symptoms, severe anemia leading to extramedullary hematopoiesis and its complications including splenomegaly and bone deformities can lead to, lead to fatigue, growth failure, jaundice, aplastic and hemolytic crisis, complications of iron overload from chronic blood transfusion, fetal hydrops and subfertility. Alpha thalassemia is inherited in a Mendelian recessive manner associated with deletions on chromosome 16, while beta thalassemia uh, caused by mutation in the uh, hemoglobin gene on chromosome 11, inherited as an autosomal recessive fashion also. Um, diagnosis clinically through lab CBC electrophoresis and peripheral blood smear, DNA analysis to investigate deletions and mutations in the alpha and beta globin producing genes. This can determine the career status, but not, not routinely done. Antenatally, we can diagnose um, uh, thalassemia in utero by chorionic villus sampling or amniocentesis. Treatment, multiple blood transfusion, chelation therapy, and bone marrow transplant. Additional risks to mother and baby thalassemia is associated with an increased risk to both mother and baby. Mother like increased uh, risk of uh, cardiomyopathy due to iron overload um, with around nine months of little or no chelation because we stopped the chelation therapy throughout pregnancy because it is a teratogenic uh, and of course the three months before pregnancy so the woman will be at risk of iron overload and this leads to increased risk of uh, uh, cardiomyopathy. Uh, she may develop also new endocrinopathies, especially diabetes, hypothyroidism, and hypoparathyroidism. All these risks is associated with increasing iron burden or increased iron burden due to um, multiple transfusion that is not associated with uh, uh, chelation therapy. Baby will be at risk of fetal growth restriction. Preconception care. First of all, we should give aggressive chelation in the preconception stage. This can reduce and optimize body iron burden and reduce the risk of end organ damage. Um, uh, diabetes is common in adults with thalassemia. Um, uh, this, uh, uh, this should be screened for um, by uh, doing the HbA1c level uh, should be less than 6% uh, that is associated with a reduced risk of congenital abnormalities. Hypothyroidism is frequently found in patients with thalassemia and the um, thyroid function test should be done uh, before pregnancy and a woman should be eothyroid uh, at the time of uh, conception. Um, Bill heart, we should do an echo uh, and ECG, uh, as well as a T2 cardiac MRI. 
um, this uh, uh, the T2 cardiac MRI it reflect the iron burden in the heart. Uh, the T2 value should be more than 20 milliseconds wherever possible as this reflects minimal iron in the heart. A T2 less than 10 milliseconds is associated with an increased risk of cardiac failure. So this is a very specialized um, uh, imaging test. Uh, the T2 cardiac MRI should be done before getting pregnant. If the T2 value is more than 20 milliseconds, this is associated with a very good um, uh, uh, control over the iron burden, while if it is low, less than 10, it's associated with very increased risk of cardiac failure throughout pregnancy. Liver and gallbladder. Um, we should do ultrasound because um, the uh, thalassemia has increased risk of cholelithiasis and um, the risk of liver cirrhosis due to iron uh, overload. Um, we do another um, imaging for the liver, specialized imaging. Uh, it measures the um, dry weight of the liver. Uh, it should be less than 7 preconception milligram per gram dry weight in Samiha. Uh, it should be less than 7 for the uh, good control of iron burden. So on, uh, then we have multiple risks the, and uh, associated uh, with thalassemia on the liver and gallbladder. Awal is cholelithiasis, tani is liver cirrhosis due to um, iron overload and the viral hepatitis that is increased uh, due to multiple transfusion. Uh, preconception behemna mawdu'a al iron overload on the liver that is uh, 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 measured by something called dry weight imaging. Dry weight it should be less than 7 milligram per gram. More than 14 uh, is associated with very high liver uh, uh, overload, so we should control the iron burden before um, uh, getting pregnant. Osteoporosis is a common finding in adults with thalassemia. Um, the pathology is complex, but though to be due to a variety of factors, um, including underlying thalassemic bone disease, chelation of calcium by chelation drugs and hypogonadism and vitamin D deficiency. Red cell antibodies, allo immunity occurs in 16.5% of individuals with thalassemia. Red cell antibodies may indicate a risk of hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. If antibodies are present, there may be challenges in obtaining suitable blood transfusion. So these uh, patients, when they are near term, they um, visit the hospital every two to three days to have a new blood samples and a new blood for a cross match to be ready in the hospital. Every two or three or four days maybe the woman should go to the hospital give, giving um, uh, blood samples in order to cross match and prepare uh, blood for her for the delivery of course. Um, the medication that is used for these patients, um, all bisphosphonates are contraindicated in pregnancy and should ideally be discontinued three months prior to conception and not to be used in the first trimester owing to lack of safety data at least um, uh, uh, in the first trimester. Folic acid is, uh, high dose folic acid is recommended to all women to prevent neural tube defects because they are at risk of folic acid deficiency. Um, uh, the genetic counseling, um, this is something specialized, I think. Um, but what we need to know that now uh, we can, uh, if the uh, parents are carriers for uh, thalassemia, uh, we can do an, an, uh, an in vitro fertilization with something called pre-implantation genetic diagnosis um, uh, to know if this uh, fertilized ovum uh, had um, two uh, uh, 
uh, homozygous, I mean, uh, if it is homozygous for for uh, thalassemia. So we uh, avoid uh, implanting this uh, fertilized uh, embryo. Okay. Hepatitis B vaccination is recommended in hepatitis B surface antigen negative women who are transfused or may be transfused. Hepatitis C status should be determined. Um, all women who have undergone a splenectomy should take penicillin prophylaxis or it or equivalent. Um, all women who have undergone a splenectomy should be vaccinated for pneumococcus and haemophilus influenza type 2 if this has not been done before. Women with thalassemia should be reviewed monthly until 28 weeks and fortnightly thereafter. Uh, women with both thalassemia and diabetes should have monthly assessment of, the, of serum fructosamine concentrations and review in the specialist diabetic pregnancy clinic. Taban, this is one of the examples in which HbA1c level uh, is not a good reflection of uh, uh, of the glucose um, assessment or glucose levels because of the recurrent anemia. The, the fructosamine or the serum fructosamine is, is, is not affected by uh, anemia. All women with thalassemia major should undergo specialist cardiac assessment at 28 weeks of gestation and thereafter as appropriate. Thyroid function test should be monitored during pregnancy in hypothyroid patients. All women with thalassemia major should be receiving blood transfusion on a regular basis aiming for a pre-transfusion level of 10 gram per deciliter. I mean if we are transfusing the patient every two weeks let's say we should um, regulate this interval uh, in order to have a pre-transfusion hemoglobin of 10. I mean in the next cycle we do the hemoglobin level. Um, if it is less than 10 means the intervals of, uh, um, uh, of transfusion should be less. Okay. If the pre-transfusion hemoglobin level is more than 10 this means that we have a good control of anemia and this interval is good. The details of um, transfusion is not mandatory to be known for you. So this is enough, I think, for this slide. Um, thromboprophylaxis, um, we should, women with thalassemia who have undergone splenectomy, we have a specific uh, case, the case is the amine splenectomy, and the platelet count is less than 600 um, uh, million should commence or continue taking low-dose aspirin as a thromboprophylaxis throughout the uh, pregnancy. But if the platelet count is more than 600 million, um, we should be, uh, or we should offer the a patient with prophylaxis by low dose aspirin and low molecular weight heparin. Women with thalassemia who are not already using prophylactic low molecular weight heparin should be advised to use it during antenatal hospital admission. So any admission we should give low molecular weight heparin. If the um, uh, uh, platelet is less than 600 uh, aspirin, low dose aspirin is enough. If it is more than 600, we should give low molecular weight heparin and aspirin. طبعاً إحنا بنحكي عن any patient with no other risk factors for venous thromboembolism. We are talking about a woman with this um, uh, uh, thalassemia, but if she had any other risk factors for venous thromboembolism, this should be dealt with. Management of women with uh, myocardial iron. This is uh, at the level of the fifth year. 
again this is uh, also it's not mandatory intrapartum care timing of delivery should be in line with national guidance in the presence of red cell antibodies blood should be cross matched for delivery since this may delay the availability of blood otherwise a group and save will uh, be sufficient so as as we said before if we are preparing to do a surgical intervention for a woman with thalassemia uh, at the beginning of the 36 weeks let's say uh, the woman should uh, attend every two or three or four days um, according to the policy in the blood bank uh, she should attend and give a new uh, samples for uh, a cross match to be ready for her for any um, emergent uh, intervention Okay, in women with thalassemia major intravenous dysferoxamine 2 grams over 24 hours should be administered for the duration of labor. Continuous intrapartum electronic fetal heart monitoring should be instituted. Thalassemia in itself is not an indication for caesarean. Active management of the third stage of labor is recommended to minimize the blood loss. As we said, this is universal. This should be done to all patients. Postpartum care, woman should receive low molecular weight heparin while she's in the hospital. In addition, um, she should be uh, given low molecular weight heparin for seven days if she delivered vaginally and for six weeks following caesarean section. Women with thalassemia major who plan to breastfeed should restart this dysferoxamine as soon as the initial 24-hour infusion of intravenous dysferoxamine finishes after delivery. Dysferoxamine is secreted in breast milk but it is not orally absorbed and therefore not harmful to the newborn. يعني هو الانترافينوس ديسفيروكسامين بيروح على الملك بيبلعوا البيبي through the breast milk but it will not be absorbed by the baby. Okay? <clears throat> Sickle cell disease, um, hemoglobin S is susceptible to hypoxia um, when oxygen supply is reduced. Hemoglobin precipitates and makes the RBCs rigid and sickle shaped. Sickling crisis frequently occurs in pregnancy parperium and in any state of hypoxia. Increased incidence of abortion and stillbirth, growth restriction, premature birth, intrapartum fetal distress with increased perinatal mortality. Um, sickle cell trait carrier state does not pose any significant clinical problem. In any state of hypoxia, hemoglobin as polymerizes, gels, or crystallizes, leading to hemolysis and um, uh, thrombosis of vessels in various organs. In long-standing cases, multiple organ damage can result. Can be diagnosed by hemoglobin electrophoresis. Management, there is no curative treatment, only uh, uh, symptomatic treatment like will hydration, effective analgesia, prophylactic antibiotics as needed, O2 supply, folic acid, iron um, uh, therapy, uh, and blood transfusion. Management during labor. We should offer adequate analgesia, O2 inhalation. Um, we should um, make the second stage of labor as uh, less uh, as we could. Uh, we should avoid ergometrine. Uh, we should give prophylactic antibiotic and we should continue iron and folate therapy for three months after delivery. Um, and we should offer appropriate contraceptive advice. Folate deficiency. Um, folic acid is reduced to dihydrofolic acid, then to tetrahydrofolic acid. Um, which is required for cell growth and division. So 
more active uh, tissue reproduction and the growth uh, more dependent on supply of folic acid uh, bone marrow and epithelial lining are therefore at particular risk folic acid deficiency more likely if women taking anticonvulsant multiple pregnancy hemolytic anemia thalassemia and uh, hereditary spherocytosis maternal risks are the megaloplastic anemia fetal risk preconception deficiency causes a neural tube defect and the cleft palate um, diagnosis mcv uh, more than 100 uh, on peripheral smears macrocytosis and hypochromia uh, neutropenia, thrombocytopenia, and the pathognomonic is a hypersegmented uh, neutrophils. Low serum folate level and low RBC folate. Um, daily folate requirement for non pregnant women is 50 to 100 microgram, uh, pregnant women 300 to 400 microgram. Usually, folic acid present in diets like fresh fruits, vegetables, and um, destroyed by cooking. Uh, folate deficiency, uh, 0.5 to 1 milligram folic acid per day. If family history of neural tube defects, it should be increased to 4 or 5 milligram folic acid per day. Vitamin B12 deficiency is um, very rare, uh, occurs in patients with gastrectomy, ileitis, ileal resection, pernicious anemia, and intestinal parasites. Diagnosis by peripheral smear, vitamin B12 level less than 80 picogram per mil. And treatment by weekly IM injections uh, of uh, vitamin B12 for 6 to 12 weeks. Um, management of folate deficiency anemia, strong uh, case for routine prophylaxis. Uh, prophylaxis with uh, uh, anticonvulsant. Continue routine oral therapy for hemolytic anemia and parenteral therapy for severe deficiency. Uh, this is uh, this represents the or represents all types of anemia. Take home message: anemia, although preventable, is a global problem. Anemia still is the commonest or the most common cause of maternal mortality and morbidity, in spite of easy diagnosis and treatment. Anemia can be due to a number of causes, including certain diseases or a shortage of iron, folic acid, or B12. The most common cause of anemia in pregnancy is iron deficiency. Iron therapy is best given orally.